If you are into large language models, you have undoubtedly heard of attention in various ways. Like in attention heads, cross attention, self attention, mask attention and so on. And if you were always wondering what this is all about, you came to the right place. In this video, I will dive into what attention is, why we need it and how it actually works. What is attention? Let's start with an analogy. When we humans read, we take in the text word by word or sentence piece by sentence piece. While we are doing this, we subconsciously register who is doing what, subject and verb. We notice if it has happened in the past or is happening right now, tense. On a higher level, we construct an inner map of what the whole paragraph or the text is about and what style it is in. So while we are reading, we are digesting the text on multiple levels, paying attention to different concepts. The paper Attention is All You Need introduced a transformer architecture based on so-called multi-head attention layers back in 2017. This was not the first paper introducing the concept of attention nor transformers, but this seemingly unimportant paper specialized on machine translation was about to change the landscape of AI forever. These multi-head attention layers enabled the model to look for certain patterns in sentences and by doing so getting an idea what the text is about, in what language the text is written in, what style it is used and much more. These multi-head attention layers are stacked upon each other. So intuitively we can imagine that the later multi-head attention layers pay attention to more general things like the different segments of the input or the topics in general, whereas the first layer focuses on sentence structure and specific words, much like what we humans do when we are reading. Of course, this is just an analogy to help us grasp the idea behind attention layers a bit easier. And what's actually happening in the model is most likely a lot more complicated. But researchers were indeed able to show that attention layers actually learn to make connections between different words in a sentence which are important for its meaning. This understanding of the text is used in different ways depending on how the transformer model is constructed and trained. This way transformers are able to classify text, generate new text, translate text, fill in blanks, follow instructions and so much more. But transformers are not limited to text. They are able to ingest or produce images and audio as well. In this video we focus on the attention layer but there is a little more to the transformer architecture and if you want to learn more about the whole thing I'll link a video here and in the description below. So now that we have a basic understanding of what's going on fundamentally, let's dig a little deeper and see what a multi-head attention layer actually is. A multi-head attention layer is a couple of attention layers run in parallel. That's it. The input to the multi-head attention layer gets handed into each attention layer in parallel. Each of these layers is also called an attention head. Those attention heads have trainable parts and the intuition here is that each attention head learns to pay attention to a different pattern in the input data. For instance, one intention head might search for subject-verb combinations, another one for object-location combinations and one might figure out the tense or the language the input is written in. I think you are getting the idea by now. Each of these attention heads produces an independent output. In order for the model to make sense of all of them and connect them in a meaningful way, a feed-forward layer is used to turn the concatenated output of all the attention heads back into the same shape the input was in. In a transformer, we don't just use one multi-head attention layer. We use multiple stacked upon each other. That's why it's important that the feed-forward network transforms the output of the attention heads into the same shape the input of the attention layer is in. This way we can just plug multiple multi-head attention layers together. That's denoted with NX in the schematic and attention is all you need. In fact, they use six multi-head attention layers stacked on top of each other, each paying attention to more general concepts as data progresses through the model. Let's zoom in a little more and dissect the attention layer. On one hand we have trainable components and on the other hand we have the so-called scaled dot product attention which is the math behind the whole concept of attention. So this is where the math comes in. And I know I promise to be gentle and go really slow but if you happen to have any questions left after this please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Also I will try to explain everything a little differently than in other videos or articles so if you have consumed a lot of other sources already, please bear with me 
a moment here. So let's imagine we have a function called attention. Every time we plug in two words from the input, we get an attention value out of it. This attention value communicates somehow to the next layer how those two words are associated. Let's take this example sentence. I learn attention from key codes who teaches on YouTube. For an attention head that looks for subject verb combinations, for example, this would look like this. In this attention matrix, we can see that the connection between I and learn and key codes and teaches are highlighted because those are subject verb combinations. This means that for all tokens I, learn, key codes and teaches, a value will be communicated by this attention layer to the next one. What's happening is that the attention function tries to match a certain type of token to another type of token. In our case, subjects and verbs are matching and produce an output value. In order to do that, this function uses two different parameters for each token a key and a query. The key describes what a specific token is. In our example, this would be something like subject, verb, object, and the query defines what a token should be connected to. So a subject looks for a verb, a verb looks for a subject. Disclaimer, this is a very simplified example and grammatically not correct, please don't hate me. And if the query and the key for two tokens match, or align, the field in the attention matrix should communicate a token-specific value. And this value that's communicated is the third parameter we need for every token. These values are the vectors handed over to the feed-forward layer after the attention heads. Actually, all of these values are vectors in reality, because neural networks work with numbers, not terms like subject or verb. We will cover how these are calculated in a bit. In total, our attention function needs three parameters all the keys for each token, all the queries for each token, and all the values for each token in the input. This function does not really compute on word pairs like shown before, but calculates everything at once for all token in the input. What we really do is to hand in three matrices with all the keys, queries, and values. Each of them is of size DC, which is our input token context size, by DA, which is the attention head size. The input context size is the maximum number of tokens we can hand into our model and the attention head size is some freely chosen dimension size we use for our keys, queries and values. In fact, only K and Q need to be of the exact same size. We can have a different second dimension but this is very detailed and doesn't really matter for the understanding so I stick with one size fits all. I said before that the value is communicated if the query and the key for a specific token pair match or align. But what does it mean for two vectors to align? If you interpret vectors as directions, two vectors align if they point in the same direction. To calculate if two vectors are pointing in the same direction, we use the dot product. Two parallel unit vectors have the dot product of 1 and two orthogonal unit vectors have the dot product of 0. If we take the dot product of the query and the key of two tokens, the value gets bigger for vectors that are aligned and smaller for key and query values pointing in the opposite directions. To calculate if a key for a token matches any query of another token, we calculate all the dot products for all tokens with one another. This can be easily and fast done with a matrix multiplication. Because to calculate the affinity of token 2 and token 3, you take the row vector 2 of the keys and the third column vector of the transposed Q matrix, which is the query of token 3, and calculate the dot product. Doing this gives us a context size by context size matrix. Basically, the key and query affinity for each token in the input to each other token in the input. For the rest of the video, I will call this the affinity matrix. Our new attention function looks like this at this point. We have basically calculated the matrix I showed you a couple of minutes ago. And now there is still one unused parameter dangling around, V. V contains the values that should be communicated for a certain token if a key and a query for the token match. Let's say we have calculated our affinity matrix as shown before and some cells contain higher values than others, indicated by brighter cells showing that these two tokens match. If two tokens match, the corresponding value for the other token should be communicated. So if tokens 2 and 7 match, like here, 
In the outward matrix of the attention head for token 2 should be a big portion of the designated value for token 7 communicated, so that the next layer knows that the token 2 has a big affinity to token 7. How do we do this? We simply multiply our affinity matrix with our value matrix V. And here's why that works. Let's calculate the values 2, 3 in our output matrix. We calculate the dot product of the second row of our affinity matrix and the third column of our value matrix. This is done by multiplying A21 with V13, A22 with V23, and so on. And all of that is summed. We know already that tokens 2 and 7 match and therefore have a higher value in the affinity matrix. The higher value is multiplied with V73, the third component of the value vector for token 7. So this value is amplified in the sum. And this is true for all value components for token 7. V71 is amplified, V72 is amplified. The whole value vector for token 7 is amplified in the output for token 2. So our new attention function looks like this. K multiplied by Q transposed multiplied by V. This is the main concept behind attention. If you got that, you basically understand attention. I hope this was not too fast nor too much math and that you got some value out of it. If so, please hit that like button. But we still have two problems here. First, how do we get the matrices K, Q and V? And second, what you just learned doesn't actually work. Don't click away, it does work, but not exactly like this. If you look into the attention is all you need paper, you'll find this formula. The softmax and the square root in there are for normalization purposes. Because we have no restrictions for the values k and q, creating the dot products can give us very big or very negative values. But in order to communicate a portion of the value v for each token, it would be helpful to have values between 0 and 1 in the affinity matrix. To project our dot products to values between 0 and 1, we can use the softmax function. Softmax interprets the attention values of one token to every other token as a probability, which means all the attention values for one token sum up to 1 and are between 0 and 1. Adding softmax gives us this formula. Softmax of k multiplied by q transposed and multiplied by v. Digging into why softmax works like this goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Just think about it as a way to reshape your values so that they behave nicely for further calculations. But introducing softmax is not enough. The values for k and q are initialized from a Gaussian distribution and I can feel losing viewers right now. But just remember, you already got the basic idea of attention. All of this is just mathematical trickery. And we are almost there, don't worry, you got this. A lot of values in machine learning are initialized from a Gaussian distribution for training. And having Gaussian distributed initial values for training is usually a very good thing, because most of them are between minus one and one. But the problem here is, when you add up a lot of values from a Gaussian distribution, the resulting values are not between minus one and one anymore. In fact, while doing the dot product for each token, we add up Gaussian values dA times. So the variance of all of these values increases to dA. But there is a simple trick to normalize a Gaussian distribution with a variance of dA. We simply need to divide all the values by its standard deviation. And the standard deviation is simply the square root of its variance dA. This is why we need to divide everything by square root of dA, giving us this. But key, you might say, why is this high variance a problem anyway? I was certainly asking myself that very question. Looking at a simplified softmax, we can see that the bigger the values get, the less steep the gradients are. Which is not a good thing, because no gradients means no learning and backpropagation. So that's why we want our values to be nicely tucked in between minus one and one. Math done. All that follows is simple machine learning stuff. Now we need values for our matrices K, V and Q. And how do we get these? Easy, we do what every machine learning aficionado does, we let the machines figure it out. We are simply taking three trainable matrices, KL, QL and VL, L for learned, 
which are filled during training. And to get from our input tokens to our needed values k, q and v, we simply multiply the input matrix i with each learned matrix respectively. i is the size of dc by de, de being the input token vector embedding size, and the learned matrices are all the size de by dA. So the resulting matrices are of size DE by DA, which is surprisingly exactly what we need to plug into our attention function. And all of this together is one attention layer. The model basically learns what each token is, what it is looking for, and what the best way is to communicate any affinity between two tokens to the next layer. That's quite a lot of degrees of freedom here, and I'm amazed that the model is able to figure all of this out during training and produce these amazing results we currently see with LLMs. Hopefully all of this made sense and you go from here with a deep understanding of attention, which is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting new concepts of the last years. But there's a little bit more I'd like to share. Sometimes you hear self-attention, mask attention and cross-attention. And to help you navigate the jungle of AI terminology, I just want to give you at least a short intro to each of those terms. Self-attention. Self-attention is what we just did. Done. Mask attention. Masked attention or masked self-attention is a slight variation of the attention formula which is used to train a decoder in a transformer model. Decoders are used to generate text. All GPTs are decoders, for example. Because a decoder should generate new text, it is not allowed to know about the next token during training and instead must learn to predict the next word in a sentence. Instead of calculating the attention for each token with every other token, we want to only calculate half of these values here. The other values should be zeroed out. For example, token 4 from has only affinity values with itself, attention, learn and I. How can we achieve this? We want the matrix that gets multiplied with the values v to have only zeros for future tokens. So we need to modify the result of kq transpose divided by square root of dA in a way that the softmax turns all future token affinities into zeros. Looking at the softmax we can see that zero is at the far left of the function graph. So a safe value to use if we want to get exactly zero is minus infinity. To set only the future tokens to minus infinity, we define a mask matrix M, which has minus infinity set in all the right places and simply add it to our unmasked affinity matrix. This results in all future token affinities to be masked by minus infinity and as soon as the matrix is processed by softmax, all those values are getting zeroed out and softmax is still normalizing the values as before. That's all there is to mask attention. Last but not least, cross attention. Cross attention means we are getting some parameters k, q and v from other sources than the input itself. For example, cross attention is used for an encoder decoder transformer model. In such a model we basically have two attention layer stacks. An encoder stack to understand the input and a decoder stack to generate something new from the understood input. In attention is all you need, they use cross attention to inject the k and v values for each token into the attention layers of the decoder. Since this is a paper about machine translation, I think the encoder learns about what kind of words are in the input, like verb, subjects, style, and communicates this to the decoder to search for the fitting counterparts in the already generated output in the other language. That's it! Thanks for your attention! If you want to see how the attention layers are used in a fully fledged transformer model, this is the video for you. Or if you want to learn more about the basics of neural networks and how to predict your favorite whiskey with them, venture onto this video here. Either way, have a lot of fun coders.